highlights, growth strategies, and market opportunities, and Bloomberg analyst economic and sectoral outlooks. I am Ken Fong from Bloomberg Intelligence. Before we get started, if you joined us yesterday, you should be familiar with these items, but allow me to repeat this for our new joiners. If you experience any issue with your audio or video during the broadcast, please simply try refreshing your browser. You are all watching from the main stage and any time throughout, you may submit your questions to any of our speakers. Please type them on the Q&A session of our event platform. Throughout the three days, you will be able to access Expo, which you can find on the event platform's menu bar. This interactive feature allows you to explore our featured listed companies' useful resources, interact with them via chat, live video sessions, and even schedule a meeting. If you click on the button that says register your interest in each of the booth, our listed companies will be more happy to have a follow-up discussion with you. For today, joining me this morning are Phil in Westland and RL Commercial Read. And later today, in the afternoon session, we are joined by Mega White Construction Corporation, CMAX Holdings, and All Day Marts. That said, I'd like to kick off this morning's session with our property outlook. May I have the slides, please? Now, by way of introduction, I'm Ken Fung, Bloomberg Intelligence Analyst, covering the ASEAN real estate, consumer products, and conglomerate sectors. First of all, let me give a brief introduction about Bloomberg Intelligence. Here at Bloomberg Intelligence, we are an independent research provider where there are 400 research professionals covering more than 135 industries and more than 2,000 companies spread across the global markets. Today, I'm going to present the Philippines real estate sector outlook. First of all, I will start with the price performance, valuation and earnings expectations for the sector. Then I'll go into further details on the outlook for the residential segment, retail malls and offices. On the first slide, you can see that um, the price performance of the Philippine Stock Exchange Property Sector Index. The index was hovering around 3,900 to 4,500 points in 2019 before the pandemic. At the end of the pandemic, it dropped to a trough of about 2,400 points in March 2020 before recovering after that. In 2021, the industry was hit by COVID restrictions, in particularly in third quarter, and this led to a decline on the index to about 3,000 level. And it remained higher than the trough that was seen in March 2020. As social distancing measures were gradually eased in 4Q 2021, and then into the first quarter of this year, where Metro Manila was moved to the lowest alert level one, we saw the index recurring to above 3,500 points. However, since the war in Ukraine started, the index began to decline and is now around 2,962 points on inflationary pressure concerns. Next, if we zoom into the PSE, um, sorry, let me just go to the next slide. Here, if we go on to the PSE um, property sector index performance, and we look at it versus the PSEI index since the beginning of 2000, uh, 2020, 
we see that the property index has lagged behind on the recovery that was seen in the PSEI index. This may be due to certain sectors such as the retail mall, hospitality, and the residential sectors which were hard hit by the pandemic. And these sectors could require more time to recover back to pre-COVID levels due to the various social distancing measures in place. This has led to the continued underperformance of the property sector index and is currently underperforming the PSEI index by around 15%. Next, we are going to move on to valuation. We look at the 10-year historical 12-month forward price to earnings multiple for the Philippine Stock Exchange Property Sector Index. And this is based on consensus estimates. We see that the index fell to a trough of around 9.8 times 12-month forward price to earnings ratio in March 2020, when the pandemic first hit along with lockdown measures in place. This impacted various sectors within the property space, in particularly the retail mall and hospitality sectors, and to a lesser extent, the residential sector. Thereafter, we have seen an increase in the valuation, along with the gradual reopening of the economy, and also the availability of vaccine towards the end of 2020. In the third quarter of 2021, when there were heightened COVID restrictions, the property sector's valuation fell to a low of 16 times, but was still above the trough seen in 2020. The valuation improved in early part of the fourth quarter of 2021 due to the gradual easing of social distancing measures before dropping again on the back of the, of the occurrence of the Omicron variant and the war in Ukraine. Currently, the index is trading close to its 10-year historical PE multiple. Next, we are looking at the operating income estimates for nine of the 13 companies that are within the Philippine Stock Exchange property sector index, and we look at it, benchmarking it to the 2019 levels. The operating income of the property sector was nearly halved in 2020 during the first year of the pandemic, mainly driven by a decline in the retail mall, hospitality, and residential sectors, which is partly mitigated by the office sector, which remained largely stable throughout the pandemic. We have seen a gradual recovery in 2021 and consensus estimates a further recovery this year and in 2023, improving from 39% below 2019 levels in 2021 to around 23% below 2019 levels this year and then further improving close to pre- COVID levels next year. The retail sector may be the main recovery driver this year, followed by the hospitality sector next year. Revenue from the residential segment is expected to improve this year, driven by faster construction progress on the back of easing of social distancing measures, resulting in an increase in property deliveries 
and higher revenue. Property pre-sales could continue to recover on improving economic conditions, where GDP is expected to grow at 6.7% this year, and also supported by a low interest rate environment, where interest rates are expected to remain below the 4% level seen in 2019, based on consensus estimates. The business process outsourcing industry, or known as BPO, has remained resilient throughout the pandemic. BPO revenue is expected to grow by 5.5% per annum in 2021 and 2022, based on a December 2020 study by the Everest Group. This may support employment and higher income for BPO employees increasing the residential demand in the Philippines. Next, we think that residential demand is also supported by overseas Filipino workers' remittance. An increase in overseas Filipino workers' remittance could boost the residential demand. A spike in COVID-19 Omicron variant impacting the global economy have muted the overseas Filipino workers' remittance in early this year before a possible acceleration in the second half of this year as the virus fades. This could underpin demand for residential properties in the Philippines this year. Remittance in the first quarter this year were up by around 2.4%, while the total for, for 2021 grew by 5.1% and was above 2019 levels. The main source of remittance is the US, contributing around 40% of the total in 2021. Consensus estimates that the US GDP will grow by 2.7% this year and is above 2019 levels. This may support an increase in remittance and thereby un support the underlying demand for residential. Next, I would like to move a bit on to the long-term demand um, support for the residential sector. Growing middle income class and urbanization in the Philippines could drive the long-term demand for residential. In line with the government's long-term vision, Ambition 19 2040, which sees the Philippines becoming a predominantly middle-income class society by 2040, growth in the middle-income class, of which was around 42% of the population in 2015, could be a main driver for residential demand over the long run. An increase in urbanization may also drive residential demand over the long term. Based on the World Urbanization Prospects 2018 done by the United Nations, the country's population in urban areas is expected to increase to 62% in 2050 from around 47% in 2018. Next. I would like to move on to the retail mall sector, where based on our scenario analysis, it could recover on the economic reopening that we are seeing this year. Here, we look at the shopper traffic, tenant sales and operating GLA data of the three largest mall operators in the Philippines. Shopper traffic, tenant sales and operating occupancy at the Philippine malls could gradually recover through 2022 as social distancing measures gradually ease. And this is on the back of higher vaccination rates and fewer COVID cases. Growth in the first quarter may have been affected by Omicron variant ahead of a stronger recovery in the second half as the, various fate, uh, as the virus fades. Signs of the recovery have been apparent since fourth quarter of last year 
evident in more shopper traffic at SM Prime and Robinson Lands malls. Ayala Lands Mall shopper traffic was largely stable in the first quarter after finishing higher in fourth quarter of last year, while its tenant sales retreated to 61% of pre-pandemic levels in first quarter this year, reflecting the Omicron variant's impact after climbing to around 78% in fourth quarter last year. Tenant sales sprang back to 70% in March as the virus fades. We think that with the increase in shopper traffic on the back of easing of COVID measures, this could result in increased tenant sales and reduce the need for income, uh, sorry, for rental support. And it could deliver stronger revenue growth for the retail mall landlords. An annual escal rental escalation of around 3 to 5%, roughly in line with the inflation, could also be seen on fixed rental leases. Wearable rental leases, which are linked to the tenant's revenue, could also see a similar increase on the minimum guaranteed portion. And also it could grow in line with tenant sales on the back of a recovery to pre-pandemic levels. Our scenario analysis suggests the retail mall revenue may recover close to pre-COVID levels by the end of this year, and this is supported by a gradual decline in rental support on the back of easing of social distancing measures. Next, we think that consumer confidence could gradually recover through this year as well, supporting the re retail tenant sales. And also, this is based on an, our assumption of the gradual easing of COVID measures. The Philippines Consumer Confidence Index fell to minus 24 in the fourth quarter of 2021 versus minus 19.3 seen in the third quarter of 2021, which this may be due to the Omicron variant. That said, this is still higher than the record low of minus 54.5 seen in the third quarter of 2020. Rising vaccination rates and falling infections could help to drive a recovery in shopper sentiment and retail tenant sales this year, barring any headwinds from inflationary pressure. Next, I would like to talk a bit about the office sector outlook. We think that the office sector could remain least impacted by COVID-19. What we have seen so far is that the office sector has been least impacted by COVID-19 and this could remain in the near term mitigating some of the weakness seen in the other rental businesses, which are still below pre-COVID levels. Office occupancy rate could gradually recover this year, driven by demand from the BPO industry and traditional firms, as the economy recovers on the back of rising vaccination rates. Demand for office space could gradually pick up this year, particularly in the second half, with more employees returning to the office starting from the second quarter, as the Omicron variant fades along with rising vaccination rates. The BPO industry is the largest office tenant and has remained resilient throughout the pandemic. Based on the study done by the Everest Group, BPO revenue could expand by 5.5% this year, supporting office demand. Next, we think that flexible work arrangement under which employees could switch between working at home and also in the office may remain to a lesser extent through 2022. This is because the number of COVID cases has been declining and rest on the back of rising vaccination rates. More employees could return to the office. A reduction in workplace density could happen so that social distancing measures could be practiced effectively 
and employees may feel safer returning to the office. Based on data compiled by JLL Global Benchmarking Services 20, in 2021, office occupational density is quite high in Manila at around 6.9 square meters a person compared with a global mean of around 13.3 square meters and 9.2 square meters at other BPO centers such as Bengaluru. Workspace density in Manila, based on our scenario analysis, may decrease in the future, boosting demand for office space. This wraps up my presentation of the Philippines real estate outlook. For any further questions, you may reach out to me at the Bloomberg terminal, and also you may click on BI Real A Go for further information on our research on the real estate sector. Next, I would like to call upon the first listed company that will be presenting this morning, which is Phil Invest Land Inc. I would like to invite Sir Tristan Las Marias, President of Phil Invest Land, Mauricio Brian Lirio, President and Chief Executive Officer of Field Invest, Reed Corp, Anna Venus Mihia, First Senior Vice President, Treasurer, and Chief Finance Officer of Field Invest Land, Melissa Ortiz, Investor Relations Officer, and Francis Zabalos. Head of Industrial and Logistics of Phil Invest Land. Phil Invest team, over to you. Good morning. Thank you for having us today. I am Tristan Les Marias and I'm the president of Phil Invest Land. We hope that through this forum, we will be able to give you a clear profile of our business, our key strategies, and more importantly, provide you, our investors, confidence in the stability of our business and soundness of our plans. FLI has a diversified business portfolio with two main business segments, our trading business for our residential condominiums and housing projects, and the leasing business for our office and mall properties. In the office leasing segment, FLI is a pioneer and a leading provider processing sector with 31 office developments across the country. As of end 2021, we have a total mall and office GLA of 781,000 square meters, contributing 33% to our consolidated revenues. We have been developing residential projects for more than 60 years, helping our fellow Filipinos build their dreams of owning homes within communities are safe, well-maintained, and value appreciating. To date, we have already built 166 subdivisions, 32 MRB communities, and 11 high-rise condo buildings located across 22 provinces and 55 cities in Metro Manila, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. FLI has 2,363 hectares of raw land still available for development, including prime properties for commercial and office. FLI's residential portfolio includes subdivisions that offer lots and houses catering to the socialized segment, affordable, middle, and high-end. We also have leisure lots and farm resort subdivisions offering cuts of 1,000 square meters and above for the more upscale market looking for a very low density development. We also have our MRB communities or what we call medium rise buildings of around 10 stories or less located in the fringes of central business districts across the country that provide commute convenience from residents to workplace and complete low density community living for solo or startup family living. We have MRBs in Metro Manila, like in Pasig, 
Quezon City, Valenzuela, Taguig, Paranaque, and Muntinlupa. We also have MRB communities in regional centers like Cebu City, Davao City, Cagayan de Oro, Iloilo, Dumaguete, and coming very soon in Cavite, General Santos, Naga City, and Zamboanga City. FLI has also selectively developed high-rise condo buildings within city centers in Metro Manila to take advantage of the big workforce demand for weekday residential address that is very accessible to their place of work or business. Our leasing portfolio made up of offices and malls are spread in key growth areas and booming urban centers. We have PESA accredited IT parks. Hi, sorry, Tristan. I think you are um, on mute. Okay. Can you yep, hear me now? Now we can hear you. Thanks. All right. Are you... <clears throat> Let me just take the slide. On slide five, our leasing portfolio. Made up of offices and malls are spread in key growth areas and booming urban centers. We have PESA accredited IT parks. In our Northgate Cyber Zone in Philanvest City, Muntinlupa, Cebu Cyber Zone, and Clark Freeport Zone in Mimosa, Pampanga. We have also mixed-use developments located in the center of central business districts in Makati, Quezon City, and Manila, which offer a combination of residential, office, and retail spaces to provide more convenience and complete living experience. We also have built entertainment-based malls located in areas with high economic activity and serving vast captured market of residential and office customers. We have Festival Mall in Philin West City, which remains to be the biggest mall or shopping center in the south of Luzon at around 170,000 square meters GLA. We, have also, we also have malls built in Tagaytay, Cavite, in Cebu City, and soon in Clark in Pampanga, and coming very soon to in Dumaguete in Negros Occidental. FLI has been present in the industrial park business since 2003 with its Phil Invest Technology Park in Calamba, Laguna. As part of our pursuit of new businesses, FLI is expanding its presence in the industrial sector with its Phil Invest Innovation Park branded industrial parks in New Clark City in Tarlac and in our Ciudad de Calamba Township. FLI intends to pursue its green and digital development plans in these two new projects. The 51-hectare first phase of Phil Invest Innovation Park in New Clark City is offering industrial lots for long-term for long -term lease and is ready to receive locators who are intending to construct their own facilities. FLI is projecting to close some 17 hectares in land leases this year and with full, full lease out expected in three to four years' time. Meanwhile, south of Metro Manila in Laguna, FLI is set to begin land development this year on its 23-hectare Phil Invest Innovation Park, Calamba, for completion set by second half of next year. FLI is also introducing ready-built factory units in its industrial parks to meet demand for industrial building spaces for warehousing, logistics, e-commerce, and light manufacturing. 15,000 square meters of RBF GLA is targeted for delivery between the fourth quarter of this year through second quarter of next year in both Calamba and New Clark City industrial projects. We have also seen new market demand for nearby apartments, dormitories to serve as weekday residents for a growing office and BPO workforce. Less traffic, less commute, more time for live and play, more savings. Our new generation of workforce now demands more balanced work, live and play, living arrangement, and our dormital project is our answer to this. This is why FLI is also entering this business of co-living spaces 
We have three co-living space projects lined up. And the first of these to be operational is our The Crib Clark in Clark Freeport, Pampanga. The Crib Clark is situated right across our workspaces and office buildings in Phil West Mimosa Estate. Very accessible to the rest of the office buildings and workforce also located inside Clark City. This time, Clark City's workforce does not leave the comfort, do not need to leave the comfort and safety of the free port to access their living quarters. We expect the Crib Clark to open and operate by second quarter of this year. I'm also proud to inform you that I am joined by a very competent and well-experienced executive team in our FLI senior management pool. We have a pool of talented and highly experienced members, each of whom has at least 20 years of varied and successful experience in the real estate and property development industry. At this point, we'd like to talk more about FLI's key strategies on how we plan to continue with our growth trajectory and sustain the gains we had coming out of the pandemic. We are very happy about our leasing and trading portfolio balance and our geographic business spread, and we saw these two work to our advantage during the pandemic. We are focused to continue the buildup in our recurring income stream and capitalize on real opportunities as it provides fresh capital source to fund our expansion and business diversification. We need to prioritize monetization of our land bank, convert them quickly to become performing assets, and explore more joint venture to acquire strategic raw land and minimize upfront capital requirement. Lastly, we have been conscious of the need to manage our cost to allow us to be more competitive in the business segments where we are at. And to this end, we would like to continue looking for ways to manage our supply chain with more vertical operation integration and digitalization to improve cost efficiency. This would also allow us to hedge from future disruptions that will impact consistency of supply availability aside from cost of our materials. Allow me to expound more on our product portfolio balance and geographic diversification and how this helped FLI maneuver our recovery faster after the pandemic. To sustain our leadership in the low-risk market segments, we shall continue to develop mass market housing products that prioritize first-time homeowners and buyers looking for more permanent and long-term usages. The government has reported a housing backlog of around 4.5 million houses. And as FLI has been a first mover in this segment, we will continue to be present with our socialized segment, which we call Pabahai brand, and the Futura and Aspire brands for the affordable and middle income markets. Our 2021 products, product mix shows that there's an increasing preference for less dense housing products with 88% being sold as house and lots and MRBs. We're also able to address the greater demand for properties outside of Petro Manila with our presence across the country. When the pandemic hit, various cities across the countries had different experiences and reaction, and some cities outside Metro Manila were able to open the restrictions faster than others. Our presence in these places, in Visayas and Mindanao, whose economy opened earlier than in Metro Manila, allowed us to recover earlier on residential sales, collection, and construction progress. Keeping business presence in key urban centers outside Metro Manila and in new emerging cities allow FLI to grab and be first to respond to these market opportunities. We have a balanced trading and leasing portfolio and we see how our residential revenues grew and compensated for the decline of the leasing business from office and malls. Our residential products also offer a complete and full range of offerings which were able to catch the demand when market prefer preference shifted to less dense, more high-end residential communities during the pandemic. 
FLI has achieved significant presence outside Metro Manila. Our housing and MRBs are now in key regional cities in Visayas and Mindanao like Cebu, Iloilo, Dumaguete, Davao, Zamboanga, and Cagayan de Oro. And likewise, in emerging urban areas in Luzon like San Fernando, Tarlac, Bataan, Dagupan, and Bulacan. We are very much present in the south of Luzon, in Laguna, Cavite, and Batangas. And our HRBs are mainly in Metro Manila. In the next few years, we'll be expanding further south in Mindanao, in General Santos, south in Luzon, in Naga, and other emerging cities. This will further strengthen FLI's position to address the growing demand for affordable housing needs outside Metro Manila. We aim to sustain this expansion in the coming years. For the next strategy, may I ask Ms. Maricel Brion Lirio, our field rate president and CEO, to discuss it further. Thank you, Tristan. For the next strategy, we will continue to build recurring income streams and capitalize on REIT opportunities. We have strong and stable leasing revenue stream from our office portfolio, which was an offshoot from our early entry in this office segment years ago. And this allowed us to convert this to REIT and provide alternative source of capital for FLI. We are looking to inject to the REIT more FLI office developments as these projects mature and qualify based on REIT regulations. Over the past few years, FLI has grown its office leasing business. FLI is one of the pioneers of providing office space to multinational BPOs, and we have grown with the industry with Philinvest in Northgate Cyber Zone, Philinvest City in Alabang, as one of the first PESA registered IT park in the Philippines. FLI is currently the biggest provider of office space in South Metro Manila. Northgate Cyber Zone already houses 19 operating buildings with combined GLA of 327,000 square meters, with two more buildings coming online by 2022. This will add another 78,000 square meters of GLA in North, Northgate Cyber Zone. FLI has and will remain to be a leader in Cebu for leasing of office and retail spaces. FLI now operates two office buildings in the Philinvest Cebu Cyber Zone project, and two more office buildings are targeted to be completed in the next two years. We also aim to be a market leader in the office rental business in Clark in the Philinvest Mimosa Plus development. We have completed two office buildings and we expect to complete two more by end of this year. The work plus office development is designed to have a total of 110,000 square meters of GLA in the medium term. We are also present within Metro Manila in the Makati CBD with PBCOM Tower, where we are JV partner with PBCOM Bank. We are also in 100 West and the Bay Area with the Pasay Cyber Zone office buildings. We have 94,000 square meters of GLA under construction in key business districts in Metro Manila. Studio 7 in Quezon City, Philinvest Buendia in Makati, and one Philinvest in Ortigas. These new buildings will provide us stable rental revenue streams in the future. The global BPO business is expected to increase by 10 to 12% per ITB pop. The Philippine BPO business is estimated to have grown 8% in 2021. We expect the growth trajectory to continue in the next two to three years. We believe that the BPO industry will continue to grow because we are still a preferred location because of our highly educated labor pool, our ability to speak English fluently and relatively low labor costs. Our field invest REIT offering consisted of 17 buildings, 16 buildings in Northgate Cyber Zone in Philinvest City and one building in Cebu Cyber Zone at the gateway of Cebu IT Park with a total GLA of over 301,000 square meters. To differentiate Phil REIT from the growing REIT market in the Philippines, we positioned our portfolio as the first sustainability theme REIT 
given its many green features. Philinda City, where majority of the buildings are located, is the first CBD in the Philippines to receive LEED version 4 gold for neighborhood development plan certification for its township-wide green and sustainability features. Philinda City also has a fleet of solar-powered e jeepneys Our new buildings in Northgate are LEED gold certified. A testament to the sustainability thrust is a recognition field return from the prestigious 12th Asia CEO Awards. Phil Reed was hailed as a Circle of Excellence awardee for Sustainability Company of the Year. Phil Invest City has excellent connectivity to major CBDs and neighboring regions, boosting its attractiveness to the locators of Phil Reed. Northgate CyberZone also has access to a wide range of supporting amenities and infrastructure, such as the 1400 KVA truck mounted PESA approved mobile genset as an additional backup to the in-building gensets. Majority of the buildings are attached to the largest district cooling system plant in the Philippines, substantially reducing energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions by as much as 40% and saving about 11,500 tons of carbon dioxide per year. 91% of building tenants are multinational BPOs and the rest are ROHQ and traditional offices. The IPO was an opportunity to accelerate growth of the company as your company reinvests the proceeds in investment property developments and residential developments across the country. The REIT issuance also provided the opportunity to recognize the real value of our assets. The initial portfolio is valued at $48 billion by a third-party property appraiser, while the book value of such assets was 10 billion pesos at the time of appraisal. In 2021, Philry generated 3.44 billion pesos in revenues and 1.85 billion pesos in net income. Philrit has declared four quarterly cash dividends to date, totaling 0.452 pesos per share. This is equivalent to an annualized dividend yield of 6.4% based on its initial public offering price of 7 pesos per share. This is higher than benchmark rates and better than the 6.3% dividend yield it projected for 2021 in its REIT plan. Our rental income expansion strategy also includes the retail portfolio that focuses on outdoor lifestyle, especially important during this health crisis, integrated within big townships and estates to complement the residential and office market found within the township. We expect our GLA to grow by an average of 9% for the next five years, including industrial lots and factory of warehouse buildings. 14 office buildings, four retail malls, and new buildings as well as industrial lots in the pipeline are potential infusions to the REIT that will enable FLI to recycle its capital. It is important to note that our three major hubs, Alabang, Clark and Cebu can produce a total of 5.3 million square meters of GLA for offices, retail, and industrial lots of buildings. This presents significant growth potential for the company in the long term. May I now turn you over back the presentation to Tristan. Thank you, Maricel. The next strategy is to accelerate the monetization of the land bank. FLI has a healthy land bank of 2,363 hectares of land ready for development, including leased land across the country, which can support its sales, revenue growth, and expansion plans in the next 10 years. Our goal is to accelerate the cash conversion cycle, develop these lands faster to trading or leasing inventories, and continuously roll out projects. We also plan to explore more joint ventures and land leases to manage upfront capital requirement to sustain our development strategy. As we have mentioned earlier, 
managing our cost by managing our supply chain has been front and center of our strategy to allow us to compete aggressively and improve our market share. We have also invested heavily on digitalization to improve cost efficiency. We have built Dream Builders Pro in 2017 to be our in-house construction arm to allow us to prioritize construction, manage timely delivery, and ensure quality workmanship standards for our key housing and MRB projects in Metro Manila. To date, DPI has already built 17 MRB buildings, two high-rise condominium towers, and 3,000 housing units, helping FLI fulfill its mission of helping Filipinos build their dream across the country. We're also about to open in June our newly built concrete batching plant and prefabrication factory for our house and condominium walls requirement. The CBP located in Calamba in Laguna will supply the ready mix concrete requirement of our ongoing and forthcoming construction projects in Manila, Laguna, Cavite and Rizal areas, allowing us to manage our costs and ensure consistent supply availability of ready mix concrete. Our CBP will also supply our PFF, which will provide prefab walls in the construction of houses and condo buildings. Prefab technology has been proven to save on labor costs and cement costs, which translates to savings and more competitive pricing in the market. The post-pandemic business environment is now digital and online. FLI has invested early on digital platforms and IT solutions and is now reaping its benefits. We have provided digital interfaces to allow our business partners and customers to transact with us anytime and anywhere, either to their desktops or their mobile phones. Our ability to quickly provide an online platform to our customers also help to protect our reservation sales and maintain effective customer engagement during the pandemic. We have also built online portals where we can receive billings and pay our suppliers and contractors online through e-settle facilities, which is a tie-up with our sister company, East West Bank. We are also opening soon various fill invest information centers or what we call fulfillment centers across cities outside Metro Manila, particularly in areas where we have big business presence. This will allow us to become more accessible to our customers and seller partners and provide them faster customer service. The fulfillment centers will allow buyers to pay online provide sellers a venue to bring prospects for digital experience and existing customers a forum to inquire and follow up customer service requests. That ends our key strategies to support our growth trends. And now, allow me to turn you over to Ms. Venus Mejia, our CFO, to continue the presentation. Thank you for your time. Venus, you have the floor. Thank you, Tristan. Okay. Uh, our financial position remains strong due mainly to our prudent financial management, stable revenues and margins. FLI continues to have a strong and stable balance sheet with 193 billion of total assets at the end of 2021 and 199 billion at the end of the first quarter of 2022. Please note that our assets are recorded at cost. The end of last year, our DE ratio was at 0.76 times, uh, which is lower compared to the 0.94 times of 2020. While our debt slightly moved, our stockholders actually, stockholders' equity uh, increased primarily due to the proceeds from the REIT IPO uh, that we did in August 2021. Our debt is at 97% fixed rate, with 53% uh, being comprised of retail bonds. Uh, we're very proud to say that our bonds have consistently been assigned the highest rating of uh, PRS AAA by the Philippine Rating Services Corporation. At the end of Q1, our DE was at 0.78 times. 
Our debt maturities are spread over several years uh, with 12 billion due in 2022 and 20 billion in 2023. In 2021, uh, our real estate revenues increased uh, by 15% due to the construction progress and the higher reservation sales qualifying for revenue recognition. The affordable and mid-income segments accounted for about 90% of our total real estate's revenue. For the Q1 of 2022, our revenues increased 9% from the same period of last year. In terms of leasing business, uh, we continue to carry the weight of the impact of the pandemic restrictions. Our mall tenants uh, continue to, uh, to uh, were continue to be supported with rental concessions. So these concessions are programmed to be progressively reduced this year, uh, which is consistent to the presentation of the PSE earlier. In addition, the full year impact of the pre-termination in 2020 by some of our POCO tenants, uh, mainly in the properties outside of the REIT, uh, this was felt starting in uh, 2021. For the first quarter of 22, uh, retail revenues increased 20% as occupancy and foot traffic already improved. However, our office rental revenues continued to decline, as, the, as mentioned earlier, as, uh, because of the impact of some of the pre-terminations. Although we expect office rental revenues to improve as BPOs return to on-site work arrangements uh, starting 3Q of this year, and then we look forward to the continued growth of the BPO sector. In terms of our reservation sales, uh, it grew by 5% to $16 billion in 2021, driven by the OFW sales, which rose 7%, and accounted for about 22% of our total sales. Uh, in 2021, more countries opened and the OFW deployment improved. So we believe this signals the recovery of the residential business and hopefully the return of the large OFW market, which is a critical driver in our revenues. For the first quarter of 2022, our option sales also significantly increased by 28% versus the same period of last year. So in 2021, our GP margin for residential business was stable at 43%. Uh, on the other hand, our GP or gross profit margin for the rental business declined uh, due to the rental concessions given to the retail tenants and it impacted our revenues uh, while the costs are remain to be fixed. Our bit the margin consequently also declined and the net income margin was higher in 2021 compared to 2020 due to the impact of the CREATE law. For the first quarter of 2022, our residential gross profit margin remained at a healthy level of 43%, while our rental GP margin improved to 63% versus the 57% of the full year 2021. Our net income margin in 2022 declined, coming from a high base in 2021. To summarize the highlights of our presentation, uh, we'd like to say that uh, first, the REIT for our leasing assets will allow us to recycle uh, the capital and it, it will accelerate the development and therefore the growth of the company. This will also unlock the true value of our assets. Second is that the 2021 has registered a strong residential business performance, which signals already the recovery trajectory. Next is that our residential and property trading business segment will continue to focus on the underserved affordable to mid income uh, and user market segment, which has the sustainable and the continued demand. Fourth is the continued geographical diversification of our project. And the last is that we have positioned ourselves to benefit from the shift to e-commerce through our GLA buildup, which includes our logistics and innovation parks. So that ends my presentation. Let me turn you over now to our host, uh, Ken. Back to you, Ken. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Um, let me proceed with the Q&A session. Um, perhaps if I can begin with asking Relative to pre-COVID levels, um, how has the real estate sales revenue performed? And what is your growth strategy going forward in order to further improve on these results? Ken, can I take that? This is Tristan. Yep, sure, Tristan. FLI's 2021 real estate revenue was $11.3 billion. This is 66% of our pre-COVID or 2019 revenue of $17 billion. 
We also saw our residential reservation sales grew by 5% versus 2020 or around 83% of 2019's residential reservation sales. Our 2021 performance gives good signs of rebound and our performance for the first quarter of 2022 supports our steady trend towards recovery and growth. FNI remains focused on accelerating our construction progress to take advantage of the more relaxed post-COVID community restrictions. We have also prepared well for the return of the OFW market and have strengthened our international sales channel and digital marketing efforts to provide broader coverage and more convenient transaction experience for our Filipinos abroad. We will also continue to pursue expansion in new emerging cities and growth centers outside Metro Manila and open new projects to replenish our inventories and keep our market share in places where we already are present and have strong presence. As the economy continues to open up, we expect our residential sales and mall space lease business to continue to improve and we expect these improvements to contribute significantly it's to eleven o'clock FLI's revenue targets by year end. Ken? Yep. Thank you very much, Tristan. That's very clear in terms of the growth strategy and also riding on the recovery wave that we are seeing now as COVID gradually fades and we are um seeing improving results as a result of that. Um perhaps if I can move on to a a concern that is raised by investors lately, and this is due to the high inflationary environment that we are seeing now, especially since the war started in Ukraine. Um, how does the company intend to respond to this um, high inflationary environment? And how do you expect to manage your costs? Okay, let me take that again, Ken. Thanks, bulk, of our, bulk of our costs is on construction of our real estate properties. And it is important for FLI that we integrate key aspects of our supply chain in our company to allow us to manage not only the materials cost, but, but also its supply availability. This is why five years ago, as mentioned earlier, we built DPI or Dream Builders Pro, which was to serve as our in-house construction arm. FLI has been using DPI to build our projects, our MRBs and our housing, and we are maximizing DPI's manpower, equipment, and other ha assets to help reduce cost. We have also built our concrete batching plant and prefabricated forms factory in Laguna. We expect the CBP and our prefabricated factories to be operational by June. And we expect these to support the requirement for cement, concrete, and prefab walls for our MRB and housing projects in nearby places like Metro Manila, Laguna, Cavite, and Rizal. We feel that from this, we will benefit from the lower material cost and consistent supply availability. The name of the game now is more of affordable monthly payments for buyers. So I suspect that we have more headroom to adjust our selling prices to mitigate the inflationary concern brought by these new challenges. Ken? Yep, thank you very much. That's very clear to see how the company plans to address the inflationary pressures. Um, hopefully that will help our investors' concern. Um, my next question relates to what the companies um, see in terms of the new policy of the new administration and how does this influence the company's plan for future revenue growth? Um, capex spending or tax consideration for your businesses and also how does the company plan to tackle this over to you uh Venus, you want to take that uh, okay okay uh well we expect that the new administration will continue the economic gains of the present administration no? so there were various economic and tax reforms already that were just recently enacted so we just expect that the new administration will just pursue and allow the private sector just to <laughs> a longer runway to adjust. No? So we feel that they will just do the continuation. Uh, 
So from our end, uh, we will continue with our revenue growth strategy, and then we will continue to find market opportunities. We will still pursue our CAPEX plans and programs, uh, and we will continue to expand to the new growth areas, as mentioned earlier uh, in our strategy section. And we have to roll out these new projects to address the new opportunities. We are generally optimistic about the new administration's promise of continuity, so particularly the economic gains and the fiscal reforms that brought consistently high GDP growth numbers for our country. Uh, yeah, so, so that's it. We, we are confident that they will just uh, continue the, the new, the, the recent uh, reforms that have been done. Thank you Thank very you. much, Venus. Um, next, if I could ask, um, with the economy expected, to further revert back to normalcy as what we are seeing now, and the elections period is coming to an end. Um, how does the company plan to navigate the new normal to improve your leasing revenue back to pre-COVID levels? Over to you. I can, I can Marisel, answer that. Marisel, you want to take that? Yes. Yeah, I'll Thank take you. that. So our MOFO traffics have significantly improved and are now at 85% of our pre-COVID average counts. So our mall lease space occupancy has also climbed to 70%. And we see this further improving as we close more lease prospects in our mall properties. We have increased also our um, likewise marketing spendings to create and promote more events and exhibits to attract food traffic and likewise uh, make our mall properties attractive to tenants. So we continue to market our office spaces uh, in Pampanga, in Philinvest City and Alabang, uh, in Cebu and Clark. So we are also opening discussions with other existing big tenants to help them pursue expansions in other key areas in the country. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Maricel. Um, my next question relates to the office space. Um, what is your view in terms of the BPO sector adopting the hybrid work setup? I'll take that again, Ken. Thanks, so, uh, yeah, we think that minority of the BPOs, specifically the small and medium scale BPO locators, will be able to implement this setup if they are willing to forego uh, the incentives. No, But uh, based on actual discussions with our principals on the ground, a majority still prefers the 100% work in the office setup due to uh, the stable internet connection in the offices and due to data privacy concerns. No? as these are the major requirements of their clients from them. No? So the BPO sector is expected to grow by 7 to 8% in the next two years, and we are anticipating them to go fully back to work uh, soon. Thank you very much, Maricel. That's very clear on the outlook for the office space with regards to the BPO sector. Um, that wraps up our Q&A session. Perhaps let me pass it back to the Free Invest team um, if there's any final remarks. Um, thank you, Ken. Uh, as a final remark, uh, we'd like to begin by thanking uh, PSC and Bloomberg for this opportunity. Uh, we, we appreciate these uh, opportunities where we can talk more about our company, our strengths, and our strategies, particularly as everybody's watching out for how each company will rebound out of the pandemic. We are very confident that uh, we will be able to sustain our growth trajectory and attain our targets by year end. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much, Tristan, and the rest of the Phil Invest team as well. That concludes our presentation for Phil Invest.